Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com video presentation. So the Lexkaha guy has made another video. Uh, Lexi, I think. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> and f f frankly, it's pathetic. And <laughs> so uh, I don't know how much to make out of it or what can be made out of the video itself. But he does leave some commentary that, you know, I find offensive so I will respond for that purpose alone um, I'll find the right camera here sorry I just want to get rid of some of this contrast if possible uh, hopefully that's better yeah it's probably worse actually let's see. oh that's fine really okay so simple I, I mean, I've made the argument over and over, and it just gets ignored by those opposing. So the opposers won't actually deal with the actual subject, okay? And the subject is, is that it, you want to compress a spring. What will actually happen is you put one object on the spring. The spring compresses a certain amount. So we'll just say it's this amount, x. And I put a second identical weight object onto the spring, and it compresses that much more exactly that much more so it's only two units of work to create these two units of what you could call energy and if I turn this thing sideways you know I let it compress with two of these objects on it and I, I now have a spring compressed okay <laughs> uh, with two objects that the truth is that all I can get out of this is a meager amount of energy that is, if I take away gravity, okay, the force pushing them in, um, I'm just going to get, you know, I'm going to get two masses, okay, and it's going to be going this, you know, kind of meager velocity of, um, you know, one mile per hour. And I can't get anything else out of the spring. So no matter how I configure it, that's all I can get out of it. I can't get anything else out of the spring. It doesn't make, it can't make more energy. It can't make four times the energy. Twice the compression can't be four times the energy because I can't make that happen. I can't, I can't create any more energy than what gravity put in. Uh, and I put in by fighting the gravity to put a weight on there. And that's all there is. So the idea would be is I can't put one thing on and say, there, here's my unit of energy I put in. And now somehow I'm going to get three units when I do the identical act of just adding one. I just add another one. And all of a sudden I get three units of energy. Not factual, not real, not reasonable, not the truth, uh, <laughs> not physics. All right, so that's where we are. So he's going to use a gimmick and then say, hey, the gimmick proves it. Uh, it's, it's just a silly gimmick, really nothing to it at all so I don't even know if I'll play the video because it's just a gimmick it's just silly maybe it can be known to be silly you know for obvious silly reasons so we'll play a little bit of it hello again making one more video most likely my last one but I wanted to make this video because I think I okay came up with so 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 why is it the last one okay there's a ton of subjects you pontificated that you have good reason to believe what you believe and you're not just some silly dupe okay just spouting book learned propaganda and that you actually know something about how the mechanical universe works and you can actually explain yourself um, we'll do that but that's not what you're doing so again he didn't touch my argument at all from the first first video he did did a reply where he didn't deal with a single argument I made he just reasserted uh, the crap he believes and didn't pay any attention to what are, in my opinion, um, you know, paradoxical problems. They're real, hard problems, not superficial, I'll ignore that, problems. Pretty good experiment or argument to explain where the four times the energy is hiding. Uh, yeah, it's not hiding, it can't exist, you can't put it in there, it doesn't exist, there's no place for it to come from. Uh, gravity doesn't put it there, okay, because gravity is a time-dependent force. It doesn't put any four times in there when it puts that second, when you put that second mass on, there's no way to logically make this make any sense. So he sits there and draws it, right? One X for one mass on the spring. All of a sudden now it's four X because I added one, another one mass. 
I mean, idiot knows that, you know, a 100-pound person sitting on the spring, I put a 200-pound person on the spring, I don't have four times the energy. I mean, it's ridiculous. We have twice the spring displacement. And this involves only very simple experiments uh, that anyone can do at home. Yeah, and they show nothing. He doesn't do any experiments where he actually gets this energy out of the spring. So these are just fake, phony thought experiments that don't have anything to do with a real prediction about a real thing event happening. So um, it just has to do with some aesthetic you know, circumstance. Oh, the spring looks like, mm, looks like is bullshit. No velocities, no accelerations, no complex mathematics or units. Just some... No logic either. Spring displacements and spring constants. That's all. Just more mush. So it's no math except uh, we're supposed to believe uh, the math has something to do with it. When, no, the logic has something to do with it, okay? We can all agree on Hooke's law is kind of a mandate. And it basically says that, yeah, the spring just compresses the same amount. Each time you add the same amount of force, you get the same amount of movement out of the spring. <laughs> it's not a big surprise. Well, very simple. So, to do these experiments, you need two, ident two identical springs, some weights, and maybe some string or... You won't be doing any experiment that will matter because you won't be measuring the actual forces or the actual capacity to move something in the universe. So, he's not going to measure anything real. And so, therefore, it's just talk. It's just bullshit. It looks like four times the energy. Steel wire to tie things up. First, you start with just one... Uh, hold on a second. All right, that's not a problem. Uh, continue. Uh, you load it with one mass object, measure the displacement, let's say it's 1D, and then you connect the two strings uh, in series like this. So you attach. Right, so this is just like connecting batteries in series or some other mechanism, and there's no big surprises about how it divvies up for, you know, versus voltage versus amperage or some other thing. So it is not a big surprise here at all. One string to the end of the other one. And load the whole spring system with the same weight and measure the displacement. And the displacement is a reflection of the two springs are now basically measuring the same force as twice the compression. So they're saying Look, the, the spring is spread, you know, spread more, but it's exactly the same force, so it has the same energy. So if you wanted to launch something with these two springs, it would launch just the same. This spring over here and this spring over here will produce exactly the same amount of force, the energy produced. So the fact that this displaces twice as much is only a consequence of the fact that it's easy to displace displace the spring okay at, in the beginning and it'll get to you know stiffer and stiffer but it's proportional so the stiffness will be perfectly commensurate to the extra weight so but there's no extra force and, you know it's so it's just obvious that there's the same pressure in these two objects you can't put more electricity in it because you put two of these batteries with less voltage on them, so to speak. I mean, a half volt and a half volt is the same as the one volt over here. There's not more energy. My prediction, and I also think the prediction of conventional physics, is that the displacement should be twice as much. So what? That, that's the rule. Yes, you added twice as much spring, so now the energy is over a much larger area. So you've spread the same force over, you pulled each coil a lot less because there's less force on each coil because they're spreading it across a much, twice as many coils, of course. Duh. It should be 2D. Because both of these springs, the red spring and the blue spring, uh, they feel the same weight. They yeah, well, that's the the argument is, is the, the actual spring is feeling less weight. It, no, frankly. <laughs> so it's not compressing more. Each one of these, you see, it's the way he drew this. He drew these with big gaps in them, and these have little tiny gaps in them, so you can sort of get the idea. 
that the expansion is going to be a lot less than in this spring. It's not going to be the same expansion as this spring. They're going to expand the same but and double because there's two springs. You can't get more energy out of that much expansion. So it wouldn't matter how long I made the spring. If I'm only stretching each coil the same amount, I'm not going to be able to get more energy out of it. Feel the total weight of this object. I mean, each coil is really a separate individual spring. So you can understand that if I only had one little coil of spring, then it's going to stretch a lot different like you know it's going to be it's not going to go anywhere near as big a distance so the distance it stretches just has to, have to do with the fact of how many coils do you have in the spring so it just looks like it's more stretch so what it won't produce more energy it won't produce more force so they both have a displacement of 1d which in total is 2d but of course, don't take my word for it. If you're skeptical, this is very easy, easy thing. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's skeptical about what it means. Does it mean anything? Have you actually put twice the energy into the spring? So you can say you have twice the displacement. So what? And as he points out, the math says, well, cut the constant, double the constant, and now you end up dividing by a, a twice as big number, so you end up back with one spring again. So the math is going to say it's only enough one unit of force, and he's pretending it's going to say otherwise. I'll speed it. It's just too damn annoying, frankly. I mean, this is just such bullshit as an argument. To check for yourself if you want. But if you do, it should prove our proposition, number one. Ah, so he says, this proves proposition one. When two identical springs are connected in series, the spring constant is halved. So you're just arguing the same thing. So whether it's parallel or in series, and it doesn't matter. That's just, again, you said no math, but yeah, you're just using a math trick. When the spring is cut in half, the spring constant of the pieces will be doubled. So what? That's just compensating for the fact that you've created a... A bigger spring. So what? You can't put more energy in a bigger spring. I could have a battery that uh, holds 500 watts, and then I could have another battery that holds a thousand watts. I can't make 500 watts by just putting in a thousand battery, because the battery has an extra capacity. Doesn't mean it's going to be able to turn the 500 watts into a thousand watts. It's just bullshit. Which is that when two identical springs are connected in series, the spring constant is halved, or vice versa. When a spring is cut in half, the spring constants of the pieces will be doubled. Next, you do almost the same thing, but you load the two springs in parallel, so side by side, like this. Maybe this is a bit more intuitive, but now I think the displacement is only half of that of the well, only one spring. Because now these two, spring, two springs are sharing the weight of this object, so each of them is loaded. Yeah, so each one is loaded with half the weight. So again, so what? Why is this surprising? That if I put five springs or ten springs, I would expect the ten springs to spread all the energy across the ten springs. So therefore, put it by just one half of the mass, and thus the displacement is only one half. And again, this is a quite easy thing to check for yourself. Right, and no one would think that because the displacement is one half, that it only has half the energy. That if I use these two springs to launch something, they're going to launch just as well as the one spring compressed the one D. So it's going to be the same amount of energy I'm going to get out of those two circumstances. I'm not going to get more energy out of this one. And it should prove our, our proposition last. number two. When two identical springs are connected in parallel, the spring constant is doubled. And now we have two propositions which we can use in a fairly simple argument. So here we have springs A and B. Both of them consist of uh, two springs in series. A is loaded. Uh, by one mass object, and the B spring is loaded by a two mass object. Right, and it's twice the expansion, no matter whether you use two springs or you used one spring, it's still going to be twice, and that's all it's going to be is twice. And let's say the spring constant is 1k, it's of course the same for both springs, because they are the same spring. And let's also say, say the displacement for the spring A is 1x, so then we know the displacement for the spring B is twice as much, so 2x. And now the question, of course, is where is the uh, four times the energy hiding in this B spring? And yeah, so it's not hiding. It doesn't exist. It won't be produced. You won't be able to make it happen. You won't be able to make this make 
four times the energy that went in. It won't happen. It's of course hiding in the spring itself, in spring constant and the displacement of the spring. Because I think those are what uh, determine the energy of the spring. Uh, well, what determines the energy of the spring is how much force you have applied, and you've only applied twice the force. So therefore, you can only have twice the energy. So for the sake of sim simplicity, we can remove these weights from the figure and just focus on springs. In the B spring, we can take a look at the uh, individual springs separately. So based on the proposition number one, we know that the spring constants of these small springs, the red and blue spring, is twice as much. It's 2k now. And both of them has displacement of 1x. Because they share the total displacement, which, which was 2x, so both of them now have a displacement of 1x. And now already we have kind of two tools in the B spring. We have two springs, both having two times the spring constant. <clears throat> Again, that's the two times the spring constant, I don't know what formula he's using that for, because if it's just xk, uh, you know, then it's one half. He's kind of exactly backwards. The spring constant's been halved. It hasn't been doubled. So he's using that number completely wrong. So it's already suggesting four, but we can also take this even further because we can get rid of these 2k spring constants using our proposition number two. So instead of having twice the spring constant, we can have just two springs in parallel, having 1k spring constants. So he's saying when he puts them in parallel, it somehow it's not this 2 and 2, that he hasn't made 4. He's saying it's somehow cut it in half now, because he put it in parallel. So he's saying that 2 times 0.5 is now going to be a something other than 1, okay? <laughs> But that's for the whole system. The whole system has a one, not the individual springs. You can't apply the math to the whole system in one place and then do only uh, in individual springs in the other place. It's always the whole system. The whole system has a spring constant. This whole device, these four springs, now have a new constant. And what we have here in B, it is, of course, just four springs. And obviously, the one effect stretches the spring more, the series part, and then the parallel part shrinks that in half. So, yes, you're back to where you started. You're back to the same spring compression that you got with the original one spring. So the spring compression for the spore four springs in parallel are going to be the same, you know, four springs, two in series, two in parallel two springs, what the image he had previous to this one, um, is going to be the same length as the compression on the other spring. With the same spring constants and displacements as this spring A, which was loaded by just one mass object. And this should, should show us that twice the spring displacement means four times the energy. No, oh, he's using, look at this rhetoric, this proves the claim. Twice the spring displacement means four times the energy. He says he proved it with this piece of shit, nothing video. I mean, you know, this is just such crap. <laughs> you know, to call that a proof. Pathetic crap. All right. Finish just it. like uh, twice the velocity means four times the kinetic energy. Yeah, whatever. Says you with absolutely no evidence. In 350 years, you haven't compiled a single piece of good evidence. Not a single piece. So, I think this was pretty simple uh, visualization or explanation. Uh, maybe the best one I can do without any mathematics or stuff like that. So, well, you're implying mathematics by talking about a spring constant. A spring constant doesn't have anything else but mathematical purpose and use. Uh, if and you distorted the truth by not acknowledging that when you took the two springs in series and then you put them in parallel that you cut their expansion in half so you didn't draw it accurately so you took what was double the stretch and turned it back into just one unit of stretch which means they looked identical to the original spring if you disagree, disagree with this uh, video I'd really like to know why that is uh, I because I know that two units of work doesn't equal four units of force or energy because I know gravity is a time-dependent force, and that's what the real giveaway is. I have all the arguments I've already made that you've heard that you've totally ignored. Okay.
So, blah, 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 blah. So he has more than one comment here. Let's see. So it says here, Last night I could not sleep and came up with this explanation. I was inspired by Ian Gosling, who's a retard. So that's not a very good thing to be inspired by, frankly. I mean, hasn't he just made a series of videos admitting that he was full of shit and he was full of shit? No, oh, he made a mistake and whoops, he made a mistake. I mean, come on. I must admit that at the time, this felt like a much simpler idea, and somehow I was convinced that it would help Gary. So again, why, I don't need it, your fucking help. What I need you to do is be a little bit honest and deal with the basic argument, which is, how the fuck do you think two units of work can equal four units of energy? How can you think that's a possible, viable theory? Uh, but it doesn't really matter. My time is cheap, apparently. Uh, it doesn't have much integrity on it. So this is what he wrote in the comment section. So he also points out, This video was inspired by Ian Gosling. Ian. Uh, in his latest video, he made related arguments. Again, related arguments that have nothing to do with the counter arguments that have already been made, where you can't make, you can't do two units of work and get four units of energy out. That's overly free energy. All right. Gary, I watched your response video to my previous video and I agree with you on one thing. There are some severe communication challenges between us. Yes, I'm honest, you're dishonest. I, I think that's all it comes down to. Okay, I mean, you just totally evade every argument made against the crap you're saying, and you just keep preaching out of your bibble. Okay, I feel like you often miss the points I'm trying to make. There's no points you're trying to make. What point did you try to make here? You made an assertion that somehow the spring has four times the energy. Did you show it producing four times the action in the universe? No, you didn't show anything to even indicate that that's possible. All right. Fuck you. I mean, it's just such a pile of shit. And then you called it a proof. Of, it's just so offensive. Uh, points I'm trying to make. And you feel like I'm not ta talking about the right things. That's right. You're, you're not dealing with the actual arguments made that it is ludicrous for somebody with a reasoning mind to say two units of work equals four units of energy. It's just fucking stupid. All right. And I used some mathematical trickery to fool you. And again, you used it without showing it, but you played a game. You didn't draw it accurately. All that kind of crap could be stated, okay? Your drawings weren't accurate. Uh, but this isn't a problem just between you and me, is it? It's a problem between you and almost the whole f physics community. So you think you're a physics community of some kind? <clears throat> I think you're a shit talker. I think they're all cowards too. They can't deal with the real subject. That's the real problem. The problem is you're cowards and you won't actually play my actual argument and then counter it with some sort of counter theory, a counter arrow, a counter description of how, yes, that's one unit of work. Yes, I do exactly the same thing. And somehow the spring collects three units of force. So all I have to do is add a second thing, do identically the same work, and I add three times the energy to the spring. That's a ludicrous proposition. It can't, it can't be sustained. It can't be defended. Jesus Christ. I understand that you have a very strong intuition. Fuck you in the ass till fucking goddamn dead. Okay? This isn't about intuition, you fuck. It's about Leibniz being a nut. Okay, it's about the fact that he had no physical evidence for inventing this horse shit. It's about D. Chardelet being tutored by a nut, a, a Leibnizian. <laughs> okay, and then gravitating towards show experiments with that are no-go experiments, right? Little fake contrived experiments, okay, that come out their way. But if you do them with not round objects, all of a sudden it doesn't work. It's shenanigans. Okay, this is about your defending shenanigans. You dishonest hunk of shit. Okay, about physics. But I don't understand how you can have so much confidence in the idea that there is a global religion. Oh, oh you can't understand idiocracy? You can't understand how humans have believed absolute horseshit with a passion? You don't understand Islam isn't a fact? That morons believe shit because their moolah told them so and for no other reason? Uh, 
disgusting. Or a conspiracy. Yeah. The conspiracy is first dishonesty. I mean, people point this out to you that your evidence is really weak and you're, you have so little integrity that you won't even admit that, yeah, we really should have some fucking evidence. You have so little honesty, so little character, you won't even concede that, wow, the evidence pool is insanely empty. Maybe we should put some evidence water in that pool. You know, maybe we should show up, okay, at trial with something in the bag of evidence. Not just games, not just word games. Fuck you. Anyway, to defend the holy kinetic energy theory. Yes, that's all it is, is a religion. All right. It, is, it doesn't have any other merit. It's the same kind of bullshit trickery. It doesn't have anything to do with reality. All right. With any proof or evidence, um, how can you believe that they are making up simple things like uh, ms squared? I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Meters squared. I, I'm just telling you right overtly to your face that what the fuck is a squared second? Yes. Too silly. It's not. It's a non-dimensionally real event. Squaring a second is a non-dimensionally real thing, unless you believe that there are time dimensions, which I think is really, really stupid. All right, just to sustain their lies without any physical, without any physics professors or Nobel Prize winners or any serious f f physicists saying anything. So I don't even know what your argument is. You're a collective of fucking um, moolah, uh, you know, jihading uh, fucking fanatics. You don't have a fucking, you don't have anything to defend. You're defending shit, okay? Just like all the other religious shit for brainers. Yeah, it's obvious you don't have any evidence. It's obvious that it's all faith based. <laughs> you know, it's all thought experiment or some sort of blah, blah, blah. And none of it has anything to do with simple reasoning. Simple logic defeats it. All right. Uh, that <clears throat> unit is used everywhere by everyone. I don't know what you use it for. So again, it just has to do with kinetic energy. Show me where the unit is used everywhere by everyone for anything real. It's not used for Na by NASA for everything. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, anyway. And not one prof professional ever realized it's just a dangerous scheme. So, I, I mean, a disingenuous scheme. So again, that's your words. That's never what I know. Those words didn't come out of my mouth. Okay. I mean, ignorant folly. I mean, I've called it lots of things. Leibniz was ignorant. Okay. The fact is the truth. He published this wacky idea a year before Newton. Maybe if he had waited until Newton published, he would have never said it. Who knows? Because he would have been stuck with the fact that, you know, Newton made it pretty clear it's a time dependent force, not a distant dependent force. Newton made it pretty clear that uh, twice the force, twice the velocity. Not four times the velocity. In my previous video, I tried to explain how that unit works. There's no explanation. You're squaring something that doesn't have any cubability. There's no way to square time. But anyway. And not one professional has ever realized it's just a, oh, okay, we already did that. Uh, came pointless mathematical manipulation. Yeah, that's all you have. You didn't prove per second per second. You didn't prove that when I dropped something from four times the height, it somehow collected four times the energy, even though it was only in the gravity twice as long, that somehow it created, it, it, it manifests four times the force. Well, where did it get four times the force from? Physics relies heavy on mathematics, and that's your that's physics's liability. And that's why they've invented a bunch of fake particles that don't really exist, and antimatter even. It's not even rational mathematics. So it means it almost it's almost an insult to mathematics to say this is mathematics's fault, because mathematics doesn't mean you go irrational. And you know your math is very weak. It's not it's very strong, I guess, in the sense that I know what works and what's real. And I know you don't square things that don't have any dimensionality, that are linear in a straight line, in a line. And they're not squareable. They can't ever have more than one dimensional aspect. So yours is the weak one. Okay. 
shouldn't it arise <clears throat> some doubt that you your intuition so again fuck you okay it's just absolute bullshit i spent 10 years researching this shit it's not about fucking goddamn intuition you hunk of shit all right i know more about the subject than you do by a long shot fucker the history so fuck you and that crap okay cheap shit arguments it's all you people have is cheap shit arguments Okay, you also seem to forget most things people are telling you. What the fuck did I forget, fuckface? What? I've played your argument. I've given you at least that consideration. I played your stinking piece of shit video that didn't say a goddamn thing, that didn't prove a goddamn thing, that didn't show a goddamn thing. When have you applied that courtesy to me, you little fucking weasel? All right. I think that's why the debates are never going anywhere. Well, fuck you. We'll see who wins in the end, you little weasel. You're writing your epitaph, fucker. Okay? It's going to be on you. You are just another one of these little trolly hunks of shit that just talked crap. Okay? And garbage. All right? You didn't uh, take anything seriously, you shit. I'm sitting here giving you every good reason to understand maybe we made some mistakes and you just keep ignoring the evidence. All right. I think you're an intelligent guy. I think you're a liar and a piece of pus. Okay. But your intelligence is somehow fragmented. I think yours, if you had any, okay, is, you know, some sort of servant thing, if you have any at all. If you can't figure out one plus one doesn't equal four, you're pretty fucking stupid. I'm often surprised how you say something smart in one moment and then get completely lost the next. Well, I'd like to see this completely lost part. So why don't you put a bunch of completely lost clips together, you little weasel. You're the one who hasn't made a cogent counter-argument to a single one of the sentences I've proposed as facts. One plus one doesn't equal four. Okay, ten pounds plus ten pounds does not equal forty pounds. I don't think you have ever seen anything like it. I don't think I have. Well, who the fuck cares what you have seen in your fucking idiot servant life? Uh, you have a very strange mind, and fuck you. You have a very typically human piece of pus, shit, cheater, fucktard kind of attitude. Get what you deserve, weasel. Hang out with Ian Gosling, and you're doomed to failure. All right. Proves. This proves. Fuck you. This proves. He writes. Just fucking bullshit. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Yeah. This is such crap. These people. You can't make a real argument. A real counter argument. I mean, clearly, there's no. I mean, you think there's no reason you don't have evidence? You don't have evidence because it doesn't happen. All you can do is contrive gimmicks to try to explain how, yes, your complete misunderstanding of gravity, which is a complete misunderstanding of friction, which is a complete misunderstanding of angular momentum. I mean, you've broken every single element of your physics because you got the gravity thing wrong. And so to defend the misunderstanding of gravity, even though Newton made it so obvious, I mean, 9.8 meters per one second, not per second, per second, per one second. God damn it. All right. So enough of a video. Yeah. Just irritating. It's, you know, I'm going to pretend to be polite. Yeah, that's all you're doing is pretending. Okay. And people with half a brain should be able to figure out yes he's just pretending <laughs> yeah okay so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot damn I mean really one unit of force when I do this three units of force when I do that and that makes sense to them one unit when I do this, you know, wax on, one unit of force. Wax off, three units of force. I don't think so.